Hey guys, I'm Jackson Courtney, and I wanted to welcome you to the final episode of The Loft. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is not the last episode, okay? We still have two more after this one. Oh, right. I just, it just feels like the end of the year and all that. Oh my lord, it only feels that way because you're a senior. Stop making everything about yourself. Whoa, whoa, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just got caught up in the end of the year. Yeah, well, the sooner you graduate, the better for everyone. I know, the sooner he's gone, we won't have to hear his stupid voice anymore. Exactly. Hey, guys, can we, can we just make the cold open, okay? There's no need for this. Let's just be entertaining and stop clowning us. Fine. Fine. Thank you. Okay, but why are you always wearing those stupid cut-off t-shirts? I was like, just about to it. say you that. Musty that and have nipples. Haircut. Like, you don't like, need to show that off every or don't get a perm. Like, why Centennial, we're riding into the weekend with this amazing episode. We're your hosts, Jane Zayas and Cooper Dulion. Let's check this amazing episode out. Where have you been? I'm taking an exam. It was tough. Uh, what was it? It was uh, AP Brunch. What? You don't know about AP Brunch? Attention seniors, on May 14th from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on the bus ramp, you must return all laptops, chargers, textbooks, library books, and pay any other fines. Underclassmen will keep their devices as long as they are staying within Centennial next year. Centennial, don't forget to wear a mask and stay safe. color of the week is fluorescent orange. Emma, when are most frogs born? I don't know when. In a leap year. Uh, that was your joke of the week. <laughs> oh hey, I uh, I didn't see you there. <coughs> um. <coughs> Come on. <coughs> All right, fine. It's your turn, I guess. <coughs> your bird of the week. It's the Blue Jay. Happy? <laughs> Make sure you get everything turned in Centennial. We're at the end of the year. I'm Coach O'Sullivan. Um, Played high school football, played in college for a while, uh, then got into coaching, and uh, just excited to be here at Centennial. So what can you tell me about this spring off season? Yeah, so, you know, the kids have been working hard. We started workouts in January, and uh, we'll start spring practice on Friday, 5.45 a.m. under the lights, and then uh, we'll practice for two weeks and then finish with a game against Chapel Hill uh, here at home at the Fortress at May 21st at 7.30 p.m. This year, our receivers are much shorter than they were in the past. Tell us about that. Well, I mean, it, to me, it doesn't really matter how tall you are, a receiver. It's if you can run routes and get open and catch the ball. So I'm um, obviously excited about who we have in the receiving core. Any specific players you might want to mention? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, we have, we'll be, have a sophomore quarterback. We're going to have, um, 
you know, a couple senior receivers, sophomore receivers, junior receivers, so it's going to be a bunch. It's going to be a whole, a whole group effort. Uh, what are the biggest things you're looking for against this upcoming game against Chapel Hill? Well, the biggest thing is we got to be able to function offensively, defensively, um, and be able to run the things that we're implementing this spring and, you know, trying to create our depth chart for the fall and who is going to play where and things like that. So. We have a few new coaches this year. Please tell us about them. Yeah, so we hired a new offensive coordinator, Coach Faulkner, who um, was actually at Centennial in 2012. Uh, for I, I believe three years um, so he's awesome that he's back uh, coach McIntosh is joining us as our linebackers coach who's, who's also will be a teacher in the building so those will be our two new coaches is there anything else you might want to mention go Knights go Knights A late April evening, Christine and Jim McHenry cheer on their son's lacrosse team as they move closer to the state championship. The Centennial Knights are strong this year, with ambitions of going all the way. For the McHenrys, the season is not what they expected. Jamie McHenry's number eight jersey sits on the sideline. He was uh Fabulous son. I was proud to be his father. Um, uh, he was always a, a great kid to have around. Spring break, my seventh grade year, we, I took him to Miami. And we started there. We got down to Miami. We were loving it. We were like having, having fun, just looking at all the Miami girls and everything. Jamie's parents were in North Carolina, over 700 miles away. That's when we got the phone call that no parent ever wants to get the most horrible phone call. When we get to the road, I cross, and then I remember I turned back and I said, hurry up. And then I turned back around and I started walking and all I heard was a bang. Jamie was hit by a car and killed on April 3rd, 2013. Uh, I know a lot of people probably couldn't point to the single worst moment of their life, but I certainly can. In the days and weeks after, the McHenrys struggled to understand. One of the biggest problems is that you, you, want, to, you want them to go on. You want to keep caring for them and, and, and having them in your life. I just felt like, you know, we can do this. We just have to get through these hard times. And by forming the... Um, the Jamie McHenry Foundation, I feel like that's kind of our way of continuing to take care of him. In the looming shadow of tragedy, the McHenrys found a way to honor Jamie by giving back to the community and the sport he loved so passionately. I remember Jamie always being as a person who was a lover of all sports, but lacrosse was something that kind of drew him, drew his interest in such a way that was like unparalleled to any other sport. Lacrosse was just his passion. He, he loved it and uh, loved watching it, loved playing it. And uh, he was pretty good at it. Um, had a great shot, quick. And uh, it was a big part of his life. And ours after that. After his accident, we started thinking of ways to give back. Through the Jamie McHenry Foundation, the family embarked on many projects, such as funding a new lacrosse bounce back wall, new gates at the fortress, and scholarships for lacrosse athletes in high school and middle school. Their most prominent fundraiser is a 5K race in Jamie's honor. We have it at Centennial High School. It goes right through the parking lot of the, his elementary school, Hillside Elementary. And what better name for the race? 
than Jamie's lacrosse nickname. Rocket Shot was Jamie's nickname in lacrosse, and he was given that uh, by his teammates and by his coaches based on the velocity of a shot on goal. He had this wicked kind of wind up where he, you know, and people would duck. <laughs> the McHenrys have sponsored this event every year since the accident, and it continues to bring the community together. Two thousand eighteen would have been Jamie's senior season. You know, we have a really good chance of making it deep, and you know, everything we're giving, like on and off the field, is definitely for Jamie, without a doubt, and he's with us one hundred percent. Jamie still inspires and motivates the Knights lacrosse teams to state championship aspirations. I went number eight because Jamie was also number eight, and I owe like everything I know about lacrosse to him. We, now in high school, we're like doing really well, so. Um, I think it gives me and all my teammates something to work for and play for him. In a time of tragedy, it is important to remember who they really were. It was crazy. Jamie was nuts. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't care, but he didn't care in a good way. You know, he didn't care what people thought. But he was. Like, he was such a nice and genuine person. Charisma is something that really helps him, um, especially when pursuing his love for sports and he wasn't afraid to make new friends. Like, he was open to everybody. And by choosing to live for them every day through our actions. I kind of feel like we have to, you know, we have to live for Jamie and that's where that whole concept of the live for Jamie um, that the kids came up with with their wristbands and the support of the community has been just, it's for me, it's very healing and helpful. Live for Jamie. Hey, Taylor, I'm out of ideas. What should I do for number of the week? Well, after today, there's 13 days of school left. <laughs> Your number of the week is 13. Thanks, Taylor. That is a good one. That's it for this week's Centennial, and you're watching The Loft. Hey! Loft Friday! Yay! Woo! <laughs> <laughs>